you're supposed to applaud after. <laughs> Done anything yet. That means you came with high expectations. And I'd much rather you came with low expectations. That would guarantee that I'd do well. This is my first time in Chattanooga. What a welcome this is. Thank you all. I'm going to talk for an hour. And if I see you getting sleepy, I'll shorten it to like 45 minutes. And then we'll have about a half hour Q&A at the end. And then there's, I think there's some book signing time. And then I get whisked away. So this is our time together. And I just wanted to sort of make full use of that. And let's see what I've got here. You know, uh, it's that little birdie at the bottom. And if you don't know what that is, I can't explain it. I can't. It's, it's the Twitterverse. One of the greatest sources of wasted time in modern society. And I thought, why don't I just waste some more time? So I had a tweet. Let me see if I can do this. You got that up there? Can you do it? And let's see. And that. And let's see where the screen is. Coming in? There we go. Okay, I got a tweet. Yeah! Oh, okay. Stuff goes up on the Twitterverse that's just, uh, so I just thought, I, I had a baseball tweet because I'm in the middle of the World Series, and so here's what I want to tweet, Let's see if it's still there. There we go. I put it up too many times. Back up. You can play baseball on the airless moon, but only if you find a way not to suffocate, and if you don't care about curveballs. Okay, so I'm just going to tweet that for the baseball fans out there. I accidentally put it up there twice. So that's, so the tweet can, it can't be more than like 140 characters. And so, there we go. So, <laughs> Okay, so that got sent out. We'll rejoin that later and find out about you. Pairs. So, you know, talks such as this. Let me back up, back in business. Talks such as this, you know, are often loosely veiled commercials for books the speaker is trying to sell you. There's no exception to that. <laughs> Actually, no, hardly anything in this talk is found in any books I've written. Primarily because I don't like giving book talks. Yeah, there are books out there, but book talks, you can just read the book. What you need to talk for is the book. So I try to find things to say that are not in any books. And so then that makes this moment we have together special. Okay? So that's that. I'm just, it's a cosmic update. That's what it is. Cosmic update. The whole universe in just a few moments. The moon. The moon. Let's see what that looks like. There it goes. Are there any Flintstones fans in the room? Uh, I never saw the man in the moon. I always saw the woman in the moon. And she looks like Wilma Flintstone. And if I get a laser out, I'll point her out to you. Now, you'll never see the moon the same way again. <laughs> My too powerful laser. I'm going to point to this one over here. So she's looking up in this direction. This is a tuft of hair over her forehead. This is her forehead, that's her eye socket, nose, mouth, chin, neck, necklace, more buns of hair, and a top bun up there. Hi! 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 Hi!
forehead, eye socket, nose, mouth, chin, neck, necklace. Did she wear bone or something on her neck? Whatever. Or pterodactyl teeth. More hair here and a little tuft of bun at the top. Wilma in the moon. There it is. So recently, there's a staff, this is a cosmic update. You want to be like the top of the universe after this. There's a satellite that was sent up. Lunar, oh, by the way, I used to have sympathy for all the people who were standing and not sitting. But I realized I'm standing too. <laughs> so, 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 like, so chill, right? We're in the same boat, okay? That's the lazy people out here. Right? So, so, Lunar, so we sent the spaceship to the moon to crash into one of its craters. And the way the media reported this, it said astronomers want to blow up the moon. And so that got some bad press briefly. But we sent a, a, a spacecraft to collide into one of the craters where the sun don't shine. Okay. Now, what does that mean near the pole? There are craters where the crater rim is so high the sun angle never is high enough to reach the bottom. So, look at the surface of the moon. It's been hit before by asteroids and comets. Comets have water. If water falls into the base of that crater, it never sees sunlight. If it never sees sunlight, it never evaporates away. So, we suspected there was great reservoirs of water in polar craters on the moon. And what did we find? 50 million gallons of water in the craters on the poles of the moon. 50 million. Now, why is water important other than that you can drink it? Water is also a fuel for rockets. Water is H2O, remember that? It turns out if you separate the H and the O, and it, that takes energy to do that, by the way, and put them back together, you get the water molecule plus energy. And the main rocket, the main fuel tank, the orange fuel tank, of the space shuttle has two tanks within it, one of them twice the size of the other, inside the orange tank. Two tanks. One of them contains hydrogen, the other contains oxygen. And it blends these two elements together, and the exhaust is steam. You can go up there and breathe that. Then you'd be vaporized, but you could breathe. <laughs> the exhaust of the space shuttle. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's also a mission we went to a comet, Stardust. Beautiful word, Stardust. Uh, comets are leftovers from the beginning of the solar system. And they, if you've learned about them, you get to see sort of the birthday suit of what was going on even before Earth formed. So comets always interest us. And fortunately, we know enough about comets today compared with millennia ago. Back then, they thought they were omens of death and disaster. And what I always thought was interesting, kings feared comets because it meant something bad was going to happen to their reign. Something always bad happened with a comet. But then I thought about it. If you follow that through, for every king that fell, one rose. So in terms of the person who replaced that king, it's good news, right? <laughs> Comet is as good news for somebody as it is bad news for somebody else. <laughs> of course, they're cosmic objects. This uh, Stardust mission visited Comet Temple One. Temple is a uh, comet discoverer. Here's an image of that uh, comet, the comet nucleus. This is actually a stereo image. If you have experience doing this, what you do is look at those two dots, go cross-eyed, and match the two dots on top of each other, and there'll be a third image in the middle of these two that'll be in stereo. Can you try that? Cross your eyes until you see three objects, then focus on the one in the middle. I don't know if you can't, no? I used to not do it, then I could do it all the time, and I just walked around looking cross-eyed at everything I could. <laughs> the common nucleus is mostly, uh, now this is a movie, let me see, this is the encounter. 
of the spacecraft with Comet Temple Tunnel. The comet's far enough away so that it's not throwing a tail or gas. Here it comes in. There it goes. It did not crash. That was not a crash mission. So we're everywhere in the solar system. But for me, what's much more interesting is Mars. Mars. Mars rotates once every 24 hours. It's tipped on its axis so that it has seasons. It has polar ice caps. It has rock rich in iron, rusty iron, which gives it its red color. Mars, always a fascinating place. I wonder if there's ever been life there. Because there's one water was there. This guy, Percival Lowe, looking very tweedy, is a uh, wealthy New Englander who was fascinated by Mars to a delusional level. <laughs> delusional. He was certain there were Martians there building canals. In fact, it's all because of him that we think of Mars as having canals. And he built an observatory, called it the Lowell Observatory, because when you have that much money, you just name stuff after yourself. He published this book, Mars. Through his telescope, he believed he saw canals. And each of these nodes where these canals connect, he believed those were cities. So this is the days before photography, because a photograph would have never shown any of this. But he had the best telescope in town from the best location on a mountaintop. And when he drew this, and you didn't draw that, and you didn't see it, you said he just had a better telescope. But it turns out that the signs of life that he was sure that he saw were, in fact, on the other end of the telescope, his end, going on in his mind. <laughs> it was his studies of Mars that led to H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Those are evil Martians that come to Earth and suck our brains out. That's all because of Percival Lowell. <laughs> We've had two rovers on Mars, spared an opportunity. They were twin rovers, one in the northern hemisphere, one in the south. Uh, here we, here, here's a, like a machine that we build on Earth, ship to another planet, and drive it around. That's kind of cool. It's a stereoscopic camera on top. That, that pad that you see in the middle, that platform, that's the solar panels. Those wheels are really good. This thing is about the size of a, about the size, about, about that size. <laughs> about that size. We've been to Mars before this. We sent a lander, we sent an orbiter, and back in 1976, our orbiter took this photo. <laughs> the famous face on Mars. You can't see it, but zoom in. There you go. Face on Mars. Now, here's what's interesting. I think what's interesting. People uh, of the more gullible sort saw this and said, There's life on Mars. Look, look, there's a face. You realize most life on Earth does not have a face? Have you ever thought about this? Do oak trees have faces? Do worms have faces? Lisa, this is life we have genetic material in common with. Do yeast cells have faces? But are you going to go to another planet and find a human face? And use that as evidence that Mars has life? Can you be more creative than that? <laughs> now, aliens in Hollywood always have this kind of face. They've got two eyes, a nose, a mouth, a head. E.T. Shoulders, arms, legs. He, okay, had a glowing finger. Okay, so <laughs> he's walking on two legs. E.T. If you were a jellyfish looking at E.T. and a human, you would not be able to tell us apart. That's how much we had in common. So aliens in Hollywood are really unimaginative. 